All right, so what are we doing here? Jeskai, Ascendancy, Saram, Combo, whatever you want to call it. So to start with, let's talk about the absolute crazy nut draw with this deck. So the absolute best draw with this deck can kill on the second turn. Incredibly unlikely, but possible. So the way in which we kill on the second turn is we go turn one, untap blue source, bone saw, or any other zero mana equipment, Mox Amber, cast Emery for one mana. Then turn two, we play another land and we cast Jeskai Ascendancy using the Mox Amber in our two lands. And then we play a second Mox Amber, which triggers Jeskai Ascendancy, which untaps our creatures, which kills the first Mox Amber. And then Emery with the two Mox Ambers lets you loop Mox Amber, triggering Jeskai Ascendancy a bunch, untapping Emery and letting it reuse its ability and get bigger and bigger. And then you attack with an Emery that's lethal on turn two. Now, what else is this deck looking to do? So this was actually a build around request for a Saram combo deck. So Saram here says whenever you cast an aura equipment or vehicle spell, you draw a card. So that's one of the reasons why we have uh, 16 zero mana equipments here. So zero mana equipments allow us to kind of chain through our deck with Saram. When we have Ascendancy out, they can power up Saram so we can attack. We also have Paradoxical Outcome here as a way to um, pick our zeros back up and draw a bunch more cards. And then Wandering Fumarol might seem like a strange card to have in our mana base here, but Creature Lands alongside Ascendancy can also kind of let us do some silly stuff because if we turn Wandering Fumarol into a creature while we have Ascendancy out, this gets bigger and untaps every time we cast a spell. So we can kind of chain through our deck a little bit with these zeros, making mana with Fumarol to do other things like play PO and keep drawing cards and things like that. So I don't know if this is gonna be very good, but we've got a couple of different combo axes in this deck. And hopefully we can pull one or more of them together at different points to, uh, to get some match wins here. This will, this will probably be a deck where regardless of how good or bad it's going, we'll play all five matches, just hoping to pop off a couple of times. Yeah, this is basically Pioneer Cheerios, is correct. So this hand with like a Saram or a Red Source, maybe both. Turn one Elvish Mystic. The Bane of Pioneer. Hey. There's a friend. Perfect. So... Paradox Cloud come here. Let's just return any number of non-land, non-token permanents we control to our hand. And then draw a card for each one we pick up. So let's us pick all these zeros back up and replay them. Which is pretty sweet. So I can play Emery here. And then I can shock in this Sacred Foundry, play Mox Amber play just guy ascendancy and then pretty good chance we kill them on four here huh we drew we drew pretty well this game a mox that isn't banned yep emory Flipped over these two. So we're gonna get we're gonna get to draw a lot of cards here.
Okay, so we're going to start by casting Paradox. Oh, wait. We're going to start by emerying back these, right? That's that step one. They're they're actually like we don't even have to do anything fancy. They're just dead to PO. Yeah, we're we're deterministic already because they don't have any blockers. So like, not only do we draw infinite cards here, but and now now the two the two moxes with Emery are actually just infinite. So we have we have an unlimited amount of mana now. I like I go and get to do the thing right away. It's my favorite. So now these with Emery just go infinite. Hey, Trax, thanks for the host. Hope you had a good stream this morning. Yeah, I mean, it is it is an asset, right? Like, the Mox, the Mox being legendary. Without the Mox being legendary, this doesn't work. Is Emery good for regular Just Guy Ascendancy? So the problem with Emery and the other Ascendancy deck that we've played is that you have to play a bunch of artifacts, which that deck's not interested in doing. How do we win games where they have blockers? So we have Psy Master Thopterist here, which I think we actually want to board in here. We can go wide with this. Bob Simic list is very good. Simic, Simic in general, very good. Uh, do I need to expedite in this matchup? That's probably the trim, huh? They're not really removing my stuff. I'm going to be greedy and trim a land on the draw. I'm going to be greedy and trim a land on the draw. For those just coming in, that was match one, game one with the stack. Pretty sure that's Mulligan. Yeah, this is fine. Non-stop, mono blue. Got my first 5-0 last night in Pioneer. Nice, congrats. Shield's a great draw. So we'll probably wait till turn three to play the equipment out because um players can't cast spells from graveyard or library sure so this stops this stops uh the emery loop from working so i'm gonna wait till next turn to play equipment out because the equipment will also make one ones with Psy, which is great questing bees how am i supposed to jump block that one I was supposed to be able to chump block opponent. It's not fair. Multiple bone saws. Fair.
So Emery unfortunately doesn't do anything. She's just a one two that mills us with this in play. But although we did just mill over a bunch of stinkers, so hopefully we draw some gas here. Gosh, we're there for five. Shifting Ceratops. Okay. Uh, that's not too big of a deal this turn because they need to jump block. Actually, I suppose I can put... Oh, no. I was saying I can put the shield on here and block with this pro blue. That's rude. We're dying rather quickly, chat. I believe we have died. It's, well, at least we'll always have that first game together, huh? Like where, like, like where everything came together. Mm. I think giving haste is more relevant than giving trample. Yeah, the haste haste lets you combo combo kind of by surprise, which I think is important. How is Black Red discard? About as good as eight rack is in modern. Well, so I think your statement is true, but it's also nonsensical, Stormy Waters. So you said the deck needs a lot to happen to stabilize. We're not trying to stabilize. We're trying to kill them. So, like, we're not playing just guy control, right? So the goal isn't to try and stabilize the board against the aggro deck. It's to combo off before they kill us. So, like, if you ask me things this deck is looking to do, stabilize wouldn't be on the list. You ever thought when building a mana base, how many lands would chat put in this deck and then just add one more? No, you see, chat's really chat really hates casting their spells consistently and really hates flooding. So I think how many lands would chat put in this deck and then I add two. You can't you can't just add one. Gotta add two. Oh, I stacked that wrong. I wanted to draw my random before I loot. Sick. Okay, so we want to stack these. So the ascendancy triggers happen last. So we draw and then we loot. That's a PO. Okay. Um, I don't really think I need a second Ascendancy, huh? I do I do need a land. I probably want a Verdict. It might have been wrong to not keep the second Saram. I don't know, I get to play Emery here, though, which is nice. This can't attack or block currently. Yeah, the opponent, so for the opponent's deck, for people that aren't too familiar with Pioneer, they're not playing Ramp, they're playing, um, they're playing Mono Green Stompy. Which is a fairly common deck in this format. Pretty high probability of killing them next turn with the Paradoxical Outcome in hand. No blocks, go to eight. Teach our opponent not to interact with us. Hey, look, Mox Amber. So, Mox Amber, two Mox Ambers is a loop. <clears throat> so, they're dead. I 
Restabilized? Yeah, I guess you could call it that. They're, they're certainly dead. Whenever you have them, like, deterministically killed, you just, like, feel the salt when they're making you click through it. It's like, yeah. Yeah, you know your time is worthless, opponent. I mean, when all of our pieces come together, what we have going on is pretty good. And Saram, Saram can help us find our pieces, right? That's 15, right? I can just attack here. Okay, kill you. All right, so I can stamp exceeds expectations on this deck solidly. Did the thing not once but twice. Feels, feels good, man. Feels a good man. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it and do it and do it and do it again. Yeah, so far we've goldfished successfully. Now, sulfur falls could imply my opponent wants to be interactive, which could pose more of a challenge. We played chonky red and pioneer. Yeah, we played big red a few times. We've also played variations that have black splashes. Am I saying this is a burrito deck? Um, I temper your expectations. I feel like expecting a burrito here is maybe asking a little much, but you know, it could happen. I'm not saying it's not a burrito deck. Forgot to equip Bone Saw, doesn't really matter. Hopefully, they're just a Phoenix deck, so we're mostly racing here. Sick. Okay. Strategic planning implies they're a Phoenix deck. Confirm Phoenix deck. We don't have another land. It's good for us. One, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I would like to draw seven cards. Okay, so now I gotta figure out what exactly our hand does and how we do it. Who is your daddy and what does he do? So playing this out makes a lot of sense. Hey, Pit Panther, thanks for the three months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. We got 15 cards in hand. Am I keeping a land? I'm probably not keeping an Expedite. I probably don't need a land, right? Uh, Mox can't make mana if I don't have a Legendary card in Play Prime. So I'm going to keep Saram and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have to discard one piece of equipment. Or sorry, I have to discard two pieces of equipment. So I keep six with Saram. Which equipment do I want? O3 and Vigilance. O3 and Vigilance. O2 and Reach. O2 and Reach sounds busted. Yeah, so, yeah, that's actually a good point. So if I'm going to discard these, I should play them out. And I'm keeping one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, 
Maybe they should play some Dig Through Time. That's probably the case. Emery, Emery kind of enables Dig Through Time. Yeah, it's probably a putt not to have like a pair of Dig Through Times in this deck. Now, if they have another Wild Slash here, we're kind of in trouble. They have a Lightning Axe. Yeah, like, my hand doesn't currently do anything. Maybe I'm supposed to hold that land in case I hit an Ascendancy. Kind Fiend, thanks for the three quarters of a year. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Opponent's going on a boat ride. There's gonna be some squawks coming back here. Treading water. I mean, doing nothing. I guess you could refer to doing nothing as treading water if you want. You wouldn't know if that timeout wasn't from me, but it was. Good morning, Fat Butter. Oh, no! Oh, I punted. Oh, oh, I should have put... I should have put all the defense on my Emery. What a huge mistake. Could have had... Could have had a 1-8. Dodged all the red removal. My poor sweet Emery, you didn't deserve the axe you took to the face. I could have protected you, and I didn't. I failed you, Emery. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Emery. Will you forgive me? There's a good chance this deck can't be the Stiff Breeze. Like, we won the first match because they they didn't interact with us. There's a good chance we don't beat people interacting with us. I guess Psy kind of does stuff. Alright, let's give this a try. That's actually probably fair. This deck's probably much better in Modern than it is in Pioneer. Modern. Modern's got a lot more. You sit in your corner, I sit in mine. We'll ignore each other and meet later. I could play the Saram here, but there's a good chance they have like Wild Slash or Lightning Axe. I'm just going to pass, I think. Hopefully they tap out. They didn't tap out. That's sad. I'm just going to hang out for now. I think they'll tap out at some point. Sigarda's aid. That's funny. Maybe I'm supposed to board in. Maybe I'm just supposed to board in Tefri against any interactive deck. Maybe we'll try try doing that if we get a game three here, or if we get another interactive deck in the league. Just so like they can't just run us. They can't interact with us on our turn. Just like play Tefri plus. That doesn't seem completely unreasonable.
Pierce me, daddy. Pierce me. Gosh, Fry kills all of our stuff, huh? Nagate. That's rude. I'm hoping they, like, flip the Phoenix into play, tapping out. We get to play Saram and draw some cards. Okay. A burb is attacking. We get to, uh, we get to recall next turn at least. Because we kind of want to draw an untapped land on this first one. Or a mox. Perfect. All right. All of the zero mana equipments, please. Okay, go. Hey, Killa. Thanks for the read. Hope you had a good stream. <clears throat> oh, no. Oh, chat. Why do you have to be so mean, opponent? What did... I just, I'm just a simple man who wants to draw some cards. I'm just a simple man who wants to draw some cards. Yeah, hopefully we can attack and kill Narset. If we draw a card we can cast with the Ascendancy, we're actually in an okay spot. The discard deck was kind of mediocre. All right, I think I'm actually just gonna pass here rather than equip, and I know I could equip, but I'm electing not to because I would like to use Psy to draw a card on their turn. Because Narset says I can only draw one card per turn, but I can draw one on my turn and one on theirs. So I'd like to pay two and use Psy to pick a card up here. Probably Sack-like. Mox and a Thopter. Yeah, not killing Strand. They have no no respect. I guess I guess they're just assuming that like. You're just assuming that, like, I, I don't have any other gas, which is probably... Like, they also have Narset in play, too. Which is relevant. They're going to flip the sick, flip us the second bird here. Oh no, don't kill my Psy. What did he ever do to you? Would like I would like to shield my my Saram. <clears throat> that that's why they didn't kill him earlier because they had more ways to kill him. Yeah, we we seem pretty dead here. Yeah, perhaps perhaps just boarding in Tefri against anyone we expect to be interactive is the ideal route. 
Just for the sake of being able to prevent them from interacting on our turn so we can pop off. So we just turn one Emery here, right? If you're here for Jank, you will probably be okay. You'll probably be happy with this one. Sure, it's not a full solution legal. But like, a Graf Digger's Cage actually isn't that big of a deal. It stops the Emery loop, but we can still like chain through our deck with Ascendancy. Like obviously, one single card doesn't fix every issue we could possibly have. Yeah, that's true too, Tefri does Bounce Cage. Hopefully she finds some zeros. Are you ready, chat? Bone size ready. Good, good clean living. Get in there, get in there, bone saw. We appreciate you. I'm gonna equip up my Emery here, get my one five. Let's do it. It is the actual quote. It is the actual quote. It's just, it's too perfect. Joke's on you, opponent. I brought my backup, Emery. Emery flips spider silk net and acre shield into the bin. You'll love to see it. Where's that quote from? The original Spider-Man. All right, so even if we don't draw a red source, this PO is gonna draw like four cards, five cards this turn now. My Emery's got Vigilance here, so we get to get in there. Get in there and give him the business. I mean, to be fair, I'm currently casting Spider Silk Nets and, and other things. So as far as like powerful magic cards go, people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Um, what do I want to do here? Tasty wonton, thanks for the 15 months. I have to discard two of these to hand size if I don't play them, so might as well play them out, right? Put bones on my Emery for value. Value. We can go infinite here, right? We cannot because Mox Amber currently only makes blue mana. It's the 18 months beaks. Welcome back. Yeah, we're mana short. Now, next turn... We can potentially kill them if they like tap out. Got a real banger here. It might have been right, honestly, to play through the mocks. Oh, is this just a Niv? Oh, I'm so excited if we get to kill Niv visit this turn. Oh, 
Mox Amber is an opal, yeah. Hopefully this is just a nip, is it? Unmoored Ego! Oh no! They're coming for our memes, chat! Hide your memes! Oh no! Alright, so they're naming Jeskai Ascendancy. Wow! What did fun ever do to you, opponent? Why well, you have to be so mean? All right, well, well, winning, winning becomes more challenging from this position. This is a game one on Morty Go. All right, Bonesaw, I, be I believe in you, little Bonesaw. Yeah, we gotta find our one copy of, our one main deck copy of Psy ASAP. Saram would also be an okay draw to like help us get there. Oh yeah. You get that. You you carry those bone saws. Emery, I I believe in you, Emery. Look at my Voltron, chat. Look at my look at my Voltron. Is this a mirror in draft? Implying we would play these cards in draft. This is my this is my three five. There aren't very many like it, and this one is mine. Life totals tied even game. Yeah, exactly. See, you understand. All right, got to diversify our threats here a little bit. Jeffrey and disputes sound good. Emery's pretty bad if they're attacking my ascendancies. We said we were going to bring this in whenever they were interacting with us. Tefri does stop bring the light too. Yeah, that's true. Maybe I just go off the Emery plan. The chances of punking them with Emery are like super low, right? Yeah, I think the chances of punking them are super low. So it's like go on the Psy Saram plan. So open a hit, a couple more zero mana artifacts here so we can go sigh into play some zeros, into PO, pick our zeros up, draw some cards. This is the part where they play Thought Erasure and take my sigh away. Feels bad, man. Darn opponents having the indecency to interact with us. Okay, I mean that that would have been a perfect draw, right? If we still had Psy. The good the good news is if we draw another zero next turn, we can PO as a draw three, which is not terrible. I'd love to draw a Saram or a Psy though. Okay.
And I think I just pass here because I'm not going to do anything with these three cards. So if they have a counter spell, I don't want to let them use mana this turn. What you got? Siege Rhino. Bum ba dum bum 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 bum. Moo cow, don't bother me. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Boop 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 boop. I'm beginning to think our deck might not be resilient to interaction, chat. There's a there is a small probability that our deck might not be stellar against people interacting with us. We're gonna play a couple more matches to see if we can figure that out, but I have I have an inkling. Hey, Bob, good morning. How does how does it feel to know that you've encouraged other people to do the same, Bob? Send me blue-white control decks. Yeah, I, I'm probably going to play all five in this league. See if we can get another chance to pop off. Not zero chance we pop off one more time in two more matches. Yeah, I'll take one more draw sip here since they're tapped out. Premium timeouts. All the timeouts are premium timeouts here. We live to please. All right. Don't call it a comeback, chat. This is where our uphill time, our up here climb starts now, okay? Um, doesn't really do anything, right? It's not enough lands. This is fine. Not amazing, but fine. Yeah, I just had that happen to me. My timeouts, timeouts weren't showing up. I had to refresh. When was the last time someone was accidentally timed out? I don't know, every day almost. Wow, is this another five color nib deck? Oh, I should have played port down there, right? Port Town doesn't come into play on tap down. Five color Niv is currently the deck to beat in Pioneer. How is that possible? I don't know if I believe you. Now you're now you're gonna make me go and look at look at deck lists. <laughs> Thanks, Bob.
Wow, that might actually be a real thing. There are six... Six nib visit reborn decks in the top 32 of the challenge. That's wild. That is wild. I do, I do in fact have a LinkedIn profile that definitely doesn't say anything about being a full-time meme on it. Yeah, I almost, I almost captioned the title, I almost captioned the deck like, Last Modern Video in Hoaglandia, but I was like, no, that's not true. If someone gave me a small pile of money, I would play it again. How many times have you been timed out, Trey? You have zero timeouts, actual, factual zero. Would you like a cherry pop? I can do that. I can, I can do that. I can fix it. Let's go. You want it? You want it? All right, all right, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. All right. I mean, you ha you had the first badge next to your name, but if you don't have a timeout, are you really a Hoaglandian? Are you, are you really? Yeah, no, I'm gonna go to the last match. I don't think we can ever beat this deck. They just have way too much interaction. Our deck, our deck dies to a stiff breeze. What does the first badge mean? The first badge means Trey was one of the first 25 subscribers on this channel when I originally got partner some four and a half years ago. Big Stan, you're right. All right, I'm popping all the cherries. Don't tell Christy it's a cherry popping stream. That's true. Back when this was a diaper changing stream. Fastest diaper change in the West. Sideboard, sideboard and change of change of poopy diaper all at the same time. Okay. What do the what do the kids say? YOLO. Looking at the deck queue now, when you say you can bump a deck by X amount of points. Are those points getting added to the score? The total contributed, guessing the score. Total, total contributed. So the, the score of a deck is the amount of points people have put towards a deck plus the amount of time it's been waiting to be played. So to, to help ensure a deck doesn't rot at the very bottom of the queue indefinitely, I automatically have my spreadsheet add one point to every deck in the queue for each day it's been waiting to be played. So like most free to play games, the deck queue you can either pay with your money or pay with your time. Is that another Niv deck? That would be that would be peak magic. Cue up my sweet brew, hit the unwinnable three out of five matches. I think it's another Niv deck. <laughs> Bob, wait, there's a cue. There is Bob. It really is. Like, it's put up a bunch of results. Okay. Okay. 
It's a shame I'm short red mana and can't uh, can't expedite this turn. You don't happen to need a marketing intern, do you? No, no use for interns here in Hoagland at the moment. The Niv deck does at least do you the decency of actually killing you. It's a control deck that doesn't just sit there and generate card advantage. Ah, yes, the Golden Whale. Are you ready, chat? Bonesaw is ready. This is the way we draw the cards, draw the cards, draw the cards. This is the way we draw the cards. Do, 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 do. Do 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 Hey, thanks for the nine months, Bird. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Okay. Okay. I don't know if we actually do anything from here is the problem. This isn't modern, so I don't have a grape shot in my deck. I am going to take a lot of game actions, though. The storm count is really high. Uh, we technically win via Psy or Jeskai Ascendancy, neither of which we currently have in hand. So I guess we just pass. Yeah, try, trying to time people out with the mod sword is kind of like playing whack-a-mole with a lot of other people at the same time. Toll smear. That's fine. I brought my backup ceram. Okay, so we're going to start by casting P.O. and drawing our deck. Okay, so there's an Ascendancy. So what do I need to do from here? So we do this. I can shock this in can make blue, make white, make red. Play Jeskai Ascendancy. So the Mox Opals, <clears throat> I have I currently have unlimited blue mana. Assuming they don't have any interaction here. I have unlimited blue mana. I 
and unlimited spell casts. Median sub time. You mean like duration someone is subbed for? I guess that's a metric I could look at. That's not a metric that I've really looked at though. Should we have a blue Jace in the main? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I guess an Aether Flux Reservoir could also do it. So the plan from here is at some point there we're gonna draw a Psy and then Psy, Psy will make us a bunch of blockers. But if Psy is the last card in our deck, we get into trouble, right? Is the issue. Oh no, wait, Psy is in my graveyard. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> All right. All right. This deck was poopy. All right. Well, at least, at least we'll always have, at least we'll always have that first match that we had together where we beat Green Stompy and we had a glimmer of hope. Um, only having one copy of this type of effect just really isn't good enough, huh? Like, I was, we just had way too many games where we just like had a bunch of zeros with nothing to do, even with PO. And then like the Emery plan, both of our plans were just like, we have multiple plans in this deck, but all of the plans are just like bad against spot removal. So I feel like I kind of failed in this build around submission, but I'm also not really sure that there's anything particularly better you could really do with Saram in this format. Like maybe you could take Saram in a non-combo direction and like play Sagrada's aid and like hammer equipments and stuff like that. But that also doesn't seem like it doesn't necessarily wants to be playing Saram. Yeah, there's just, there's just a lot of air in the deck, right? Huh, that's an interesting thought. You could play Joyra. That, right, that's the card that we play in, in the historic blue-red deck that we played, right? That's kind of like another, another Saram style effect. I don't, I don't hate... I don't hate that idea. She's the four drop that says, whenever you cast a historic spell, you draw a card. Yeah, I could see, I could see this being okay. This is, this is redundancy similar to how the, yeah, still, still bad against removal though. And still just have a bunch of air in your deck is the issue though. So I'd be surprised if this pushes the deck to being competitive, but it would make it a little bit more redundant, I suppose. But then the other flip side of that is like, what are you cutting? So like, are you cutting POs? Are you cutting expedites? Are you cutting lands? Are you cutting zeros? Like there aren't really good things to cut because if you go too low, you like don't have the density to actually cut through your deck. So yeah, I felt, I felt like this was mostly just a miss for me. And I think that this is probably a card that's just not gonna be particularly competitive here. I think if you want to Cheerios people, you're actually probably better off Cheeriosing in Modern, not only because you have eight copies of this effect there, but Modern's also a little bit less interactive than Pioneer is on average. So like your deck losing to removal spells is a little bit less big of a deal if there's less removal spells floating around. All right, what are we 